we talk about the anus. That's why we talk about the inner fistula of fissure and the hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids is also a common surgical condition that our people go through um, hemorrhoidectomies on, in our hospitals every day. So the anal region has um, one, one orifice, okay? And we have the stool coming out from there most of the time. Now you can have a fistula where you have another connection, another tube, another opening, and you can have one that connects if you are a woman to the vagina, or you have another one that connects and opens into the perineal region. So that is not supposed to happen. Now, if you have a fistula, it's not a medical condition. You have to come and then we'll look at it and see how best we can help you deal with it. So when you have a fistula, we try to move the tube and try to help the wound to heal so that that extra lumen is closed. And it's very difficult. So once you have that problem, there's a leakage of pass to depend on what is happening, where the fistula is. You can have flatus, feces from the vagina. So if there's infection, a person's temperature will rise. Sometimes when you are moving or you are sitting down or defecating or even coughing, you are in pain, you know. So when the infection is not treated well, then the whole body can even become infected. Now, with the management, the fistula, depending on where it is and the type of fistula we are talking about, like I mentioned a moment ago, we try to remove, we try to excise, and we call that fistulectomy. And then sometimes they try to open the tracks so that you can dress it, pack it, give some treatments, you know, inside there. And then sometimes they do flap repair where they take a tissue from another part of their body to kind of uh, cover up and treat it so that it will close. It's a difficult condition to handle. Fistula is a difficult condition to handle. Now we can also have a fissure. A fissure is like a crack in the inner tract. The inner tract is not supposed to have a, a crack. It's supposed to be a, a normal, you know, mucous membrane uh, opening or tract. So when you have cracks there, it's painful, it bleeds. When you are going to defecate, you can't defecate, you are always in pain. Uh, abusing laxatives so that the stool will be soft for you and all that. So in that case, when the, um, the patient comes in, we try to see what it is. So can we examine the place and know how bad the, the fissure is? Okay, we've seen it. Can we do some sit bath? Um, can we give some antibiotic? Can we treat you without necessarily going in there? So we try that. If it works for you, fine. Then the second line therapy is intra-anal application of nitroglycerin. Okay, so it's an ointment, and they try to apply it after you have done the sit bath. And then the surgical therapy, of course, when it's all these uh, measures fail. But then uh, we try to dilate the sphincter, the sphincter, the inner sphincter, to make sure that we can get where the fissure is. And then if you have to excise it, and then the wound can now heal. Remember, if you have an old wound, 
it's difficult to heal than a clean new wound. So sometimes that is done, but it's not the first uh, line of management. So I put in some pre-op and post-op for the two that uh, you need to remember. Now, um, when you have a patient with an anal problem, remember that sit bath is a common thing that they do. Make sure that the basin for the sit bath is always clean and it's done after each bowel movement or morning and evening. And uh, a patient sure will be fine. Then regarding hemorrhoidectomy, the hemorrhoids can bleed a lot. Can be very painful. Some of them itch, very bad itching. So imagine you're always scratching your backside. How will you feel? And some of them also can prolapse, can come out like you have to find a way of pushing it back and all that. So when you have um, a case of hemorrhoids, uh, with all the pain and then the urinary retention and all that, we try to, okay, so you guys, this is adults, right? And somebody like me, then I should go and sit in a bowl of water. People have their own, and you see where it is, if you want to dress the wound or remove the pack that was inserted from the theater, and then I have to bend down and uh, raise my backside, and uh, it's not comfortable. So when you have a patient with anal surgery, you need to provide very good privacy for the patient. It's important. Privacy is very, very important. And maybe you teach the person self-care so that if something that I can do for myself, why not? If I cannot do it myself and you have to come and do it for me, they have to be sensitive to my needs and then they, you, you treat me as such. So the post-operative care, in addition to all that we have been talking about, I said that every surgery you don't give anything by mouth until the bowel sounds return. Once you can assess and confirm that you have bowel sounds, bowel, bowel activity, you start with safe. So it means that IV fluid is a must. Pain management is a must. Looking at the wound for bleeding is a must. The patient observation of outputs, as in the urine and all that. So I'm not repeating them because we have done them in session two. So just go back to the session two and verify and cross-check and get your um, stuff intact. Then you add to it as you go along. So you see, surgery is very easy. Once you know what to do and how to go about it, you are fine. Once you know that this particular condition, that is what I have to know specifically, you are fine. If you don't know the general ones, it makes it difficult because you have to read and read and read. And it makes life uh, quite complicated. If you see anything that you are not happy about during your care, during your dressing of the wound, you have to report to the surgeon so that you, the two of you can put your heads together and see how best you can help the patient. Remember that after um, anal surgery, hernia, um, hemorrhoids, the patient is giving stool softness so that the patient will not be constipated. Um, Patient to be very clean, High personal hygiene is important. I've mentioned sit bath already, and then um, coughing exercise so that the condition will not be worse. There are so many things that I have put together for you in the Sakai material. So please read them for more information regarding this.